let's look at some of the, the research we do. So just so you know, we're really grounded in research, and the point of our work is the research we have. Um, I'm just going to go run quickly through some of the different research projects we've done. Comparison of traditional homework with computer-supported homework, and we'll be talking about how um, people use this technology to really enhance homework, um, improving homework with computers. This was a different research study that used um, some of our, our skill builders uh, to tutor or not to tutor. Um, computers can give support to students, but how much should we be giving? Um, and we've done randomized control trials comparing different types of tutoring. This one um, is evaluation of online formative assessments. And this was a, a quasi-experimental uh, study where we looked at um, schools across a district. And, and some of them used our tool and some of them did not, and, and showed that there was a greater learning gain in the schools that were using the system. Um, we also have a parent notification system, and we found that in, in connecting parents to um, what's going on in the schools, you can actually improve a student's outcome. Currently, we are in the midst of a $3.5 million efficacy trial on our system where um, we're going to select 52 schools in the state of Maine where they actually have laptops for every middle school student, and those seventh grade students Half of them will be getting assessments and half of them will not. And in, in 2015, we'll be able to look at the data and see after two years of using this online tool to really, as we're going to as we're going to see, to really harness um, this technology so teachers can change what they do in classrooms. Um, and we'll see if, what, what kind of results we get. So that's our study. Um, but as I mentioned, that the Next Generation Learning Challenge grant funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation really has allowed us to, to do more outreach. Um, you'll see if you look at this map where assistance is being used. And it, of course, is clumped around New England where we are situated and up into Maine because they have the laptops and we've been doing a lot of recruitment up there. But there is a spread across the country of people who have found assistance and are using it. And so um, we're really spreading because it is an online tool. We've built it. It's there. It sits on our, on our computers. And it can be used by many, many different people. Christina, if I could ask a question yeah. on that. Um, how, sure. is the, um, in how is the assessment system um, uh, differentiated for like elementary versus middle or higher? Does it matter? You know, I think it's, I, I sometimes like to compare it um, to a photocopier. And as you're going to see soon, it's a, deliver, it's a delivery system of questions and students get feedback. And so it really, um, depending on the content you have, is what the students will do. So you, could, you can photocopy something for a college student on a photocopier, but you can also photocopy something for um, a fourth grader. And um, sometimes if you're going to put words on that photocopier, it better be for someone who can read and so on. So um, it's really up to the educator as to how they use the tool. That's great. Um, so it's adaptable, right? Analogy, that, yeah. Yes. And the other analogy that goes with the photocopier is that um, you can photocopy word searches. You can do something that's not quite so successful as far as really enhancing learning. Or you can photocopy something that is an amazing tool for a project that you have going on, like a graphic organizer that's really going to help the kids keep track of what they're doing in some larger project that the teacher is orchestrating. And I think assessments is very similar to that. It's a tool that gets used. And um, I'm not going to say abused, but it can also, it's, it's how well the teacher uses it. And I think, um, as always, with good questions, that leads us to our next spot in what we're going today. Um, this graphic that you're looking at um, is designed to kind of give you like the sort of the big picture of assessments. Um, it's used by students, it's used by teachers, and it's used by principals and administrators. Um, but the big idea is that you're taking all this things that are typically done on paper and in the hands of a student and then passed to the teacher. The teacher then looks at it and passes the paper back to the students. And instead of doing it that way, we, we're harnessing um, the internet and our, our platform in order to put things into a more organized um, format like you see on the right with this sort of, this is an item report that we'll, we'll be looking at these in a minute um, that shows you everything the students have done and all of that's, that's already like put together. So, what I'm going to do now is, is relieve ourselves from the PowerPoint and move on to um, the internet and let you really see what assessments looks like um, from a student's perspective. So um, here I am at the assessments website. And as 
just bear with me for about five or ten minutes as you see what assessments looks like um, for students and teachers, and then we can start to discuss and think about how this changes what's happening in schools or how this assists what's happening in schools. Um, so a student would come to assessments.org, and since they've already made an account, they would click on log in, and then they would type their, um, their login. And I've made an account for us today. Um, it's Megan LH, and, um, and her password is 1234. So she just logs in, and we tell not to. And, and here she is. It's the first time she's been here, so she's going to enroll in a class. And a student only sees the teachers at her school. So um, that way, you know, we're keeping this sort of locked down. And I'm going to enroll in a class. And I'm going to choose this one called Assistance Get Started Seminar. And I'm going to choose a section called 007 and enroll. And now I'm going to click into this class. All right, so we'll start at the top this time. And here's the tutoring feedback. And there's the math question. So a student clicks on that, and then up comes the question. So very similar as with paper, um, a student would see a question and solve it. Um, we we find that our teachers quickly realize they have to ask their students to actually solve these questions on paper. So let's say we solved it, we worked it out, we got the wrong answer, and click Submit. So the system, um, this is your first example of what we call immediate feedback. The students know immediately that they got the problem wrong. And in this case, um, they're actually getting some serious support. And in, the support is in the same format as that is seen by um, when a tutor, a real life human tutor works with a student, the tu human tutors ask questions. And so this question says, first you need to find the measure of angle BCA. What do you think it is? And so, oh, we see that BCA, and if the student still has trouble and can't get it, they can look at a hint, and this hint is, is giving some information about angles, and then they can look at the next hint, and it says that the angles, the two angles have to add up to 180 degrees, as we see in the images above. And then the last hint says um, that the answer is actually 50. And so we'll, we'll do those and look at that one and go on to the next step. So we got that answer correct. And now it's saying, OK, let's go back to A. That was the original question. And we know that we just found this to be 50. So um, the actual answer is 60. We'll submit our answer. We're told we're correct. So there's times when the student gets it right, and they're told instantly that they got it right. And if they get it wrong, they're told that they got it wrong. Um, this next question, the area of a rect square is, is 49 square inches. What's the length of the side of the square? It's 7. So let's get this right so we can sort of demonstrate those two um, versions. We got the first one wrong. We can see there's four questions in this problem set. We got the second one right. We go to the next one, and so on. So that's what um, a problem set with lots of tutoring looks like. I'm going to show you one more problem set with um, feedback. Oh, I went to the wrong class. Um, in the tutoring and feedback area. And this one's a grammar question. So it's just asking us to identify the verb in a sentence below. The sailor practiced tirelessly. Um, which one is the verb? And we'll get it wrong again. No, it's not sail. That's a noun, in fact. So the feedback here, since it's multiple choice, is just in the um, a little feedback message that goes with the wrong answer. And then I can click, oh, it's actually practiced, submit answer, and I can do some more of these. Skipper, identify the verb in the sentence, and that would be commanded. So when you get it right, you get the green check. You get it wrong, you get the X. So that's the student's um, perspective. The student gets feedback. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move us over to um, the teacher, that's Mrs. Heffernan, and change our view. And I've already logged into this teacher's account. And um, remember, the student enrolled in the Getting Started seminar. And so I'm going to go over here and click on Assignments to see the assignments. And we did the tutoring and feedback assignments. Now it has here that 24 people are completed, two are in progress. Remember, we didn't actually finish this assignment, so we're one of the people in progress. So now I'm going to go over here and click on Report. And so this is what I mean by getting that sort of it feedback for the teacher's perspective. So the student we know got um, feedback, 
And these are actually other teachers who have done this same assignment along with us. So I'm going to click on anonymize and we can see them, the names disappeared or unanonymize and we can see the names over here. If um, a teacher shows this data to their class, they would click on anonymize and so that the students can see the data, think about the data, but not know which kid did what. Christina, so, um, well, quick just, question. Yeah. Um, when, when, for the, these assessments that you're showing us, are these um, come from a database or are they teacher created? Right, so that's one of the things. The other thing that assessments is, as well as a place that gives a lot of feedback, is that assessments is a tool that's very flexible. And so we have um, a lot of content that has already been created um, by us here at WPI and other teachers that have shared it with, their, with us and we've shared it with everybody who can use assessments. Um, so there's a lot of content that's already been created. In fact, these questions here with, the, with this um, triangle one that we did, that was one that we created here in-house. And um, so a lot of teachers begin by selecting that. But as we know, teachers are very independent souls, and they like to ask the right questions. In fact, they're the humans who are really in tune and in touch with what's going on in their classroom. So they also need to be able to select exactly what they want to give to their students. And so they can both build their own content, or they can edit the content that's been built by us to make it just what they need for their students. And um, so this sort of reworking of the way that they spend their time is one of those pieces that um, that I mean when I say harnessing internet, harnessing technology. So look here at, at what we're seeing here. This is called an item report. And we did this question. We then did the second question about the area of a square. And so up at the top you see the four questions that were in that problem set. And we didn't actually go through all of these. Um, then along the side are each of the students. Okay, so those are the students on the left, and in fact, if I click on anonymous, we can find um, Megan, here she is, Megan Heffernan, only did the two questions, that was us, and had started the, the third question and hasn't gotten to the fourth question. So you instantly see somebody who just did some problems. Then across the top here, we have um, the percent correct for each one of the questions. So we can hone in on which questions were most difficult. And then there's also um, common wrong answers. So this first question about the triangle, 21% of the people who answered this said 50 as the correct answer, and that's, that's the other angle, not the other one. 21% said 70, which was just one of the numbers in the problem. And so quickly, teachers can start to analyze their data. Um, the next question is that 72% said C, um, so we can start to see these common wrong answers. Uh, along the left-hand side is the percent correct for each one of the students. And so that allows teachers to assess each individual student as well as the class as a whole. Um, and um, I just, we just actually added this long time spent um, column. And I just went into a teacher's classroom yesterday and she was so excited about this because she showed the students the time spent, and she had some reluctant assessment users, and they were just thinking, oh, that's going to be too hard, it's going to be so much time. And it turned out that the other kids in the class who had finished the assignment, it had really only taken them five minutes. And so having this data that other students in your class sit down and do the work, and it only takes them five minutes, well, maybe I can do that too. That doesn't seem too overwhelming. But sometimes we think our homework is going to take forever. Um, so it's it's this data that is, is demonstrated to, to teachers that becomes really powerful. And um, our data is right here, and I did no work to get that here. And I know that 21 was the number I answered. The yellow box means that I went to the last hint. Remember when I just clicked down and it told me the answer is 50 and I typed it in? Well, that's a bit of a problem. Um, this teacher here did that for three questions. That's a lot of gaming. Um, a lot of really like going into those bottom out hints, we call them. And, um, and so that's an important piece of information for a teacher to know. So this is the item report. Let's go back um, and look at some of the other types of assignments. So if I go back into my class, what you just saw were questions that had a lot of feedback. Um, now I'm going to show you some other types of questions. This Christina. next one is essay questions. So, yeah. Um, one quick question. Are the in-house created problems aligned to the common core for each grade level? 
Right, so alignment to the Common Core is something we're working on with the content that we've already built. So we've built um, quite a bit of content, and um, it originally we were working here in Massachusetts with Massachusetts teachers. We've been doing this for 10 years, and the frameworks, the Massachusetts State's frameworks, were really important to us in aligning it there. Um, but now what we've started to do is, is to align our content into the Common Core and match it up with the Common Core. And so we're going to be providing um, our content aligned that way. Um, but as far as the Common Core, you know, teachers, as they start to, to make that shift, they have to really start to look at the Common Core, look at the questions they're asking. And so this is also a really great tool for them to, to work in teams thinking about um, the common, you know, the common core as they're looking at the questions. I think it's important to remember that at, while we have a lot of good content, we're, we're not a platform that provides the world. Like we're, we're really a platform that provides you the opportunity to collect this data. And um, as we, when we're done looking at sort of the different types of assessments, we're going to move over and look at a teacher's account and see how that teacher is really harnessing this tool to provide, to allow him to do what he really wants to do as a teacher and allow him to do it more efficiently. And I'll be sure to keep, keep tagging into the Common Core as we go along. Um, so this question has um, an essay that the students have to read. So it, this comes from the Massachusetts State's Frameworks. Again, this is one of the questions that they gave on their comprehensive exam that have all been released, so we were able to put it into our system. But what we put in, as well as is the feedback, um, the student says that they've read it, and they go to the next problem. But then this question is not one of those multiple choice or short answer. It says, what's the main idea of the passage? And the student would say, you know, the main idea is that there are acorns in the picture. All right, we didn't actually read it. So all I saw were some acorns, and so that's all I'm going to submit. And then they go to the next problem. And in this instance, it was the last question. So we actually did finish this assignment. So I'm going to go back to Tutor, see more assignments. And that was an essay. We'll go back and look at the teacher view of that in a minute. The next type of problems are what we call skill builders, in which you work until you've sort of mastered a skill. Um, this one's energy subtraction. So if I click on that, it's just a, a in fact, 120 questions of integer subtraction. And if I get them wrong, I get to try again. And if I really can't solve it, I have hints. And so there's these hints that help me work through the problems. And then I see that the answer is negative 31. And I go on to the next one. The goal here is to get three right in a row. And so once I get those three right in a row, um, I will be I will be considered mastered for the moment. And um, so this is 31, negative 31. And then we'll do one more, negative um, 20, 22. Let's hope it's right. Yes. All right. And notice it says you've mastered the assignment. And so this is a little bit different. This is very exciting for math teachers. Um, one, of the, one of the things that they have the hardest time in is really getting kids to practice those skills. Um, and that, as you mentioned, the Common Core is one of the fluency, is one of the Common Core standards, the process standards, as well as doing more large problem solving, um, using representations. So if the fluency part can be handled um, by a computer and you can keep up with the kids with just right practice, then once again, you, you've harnessed that technology to allow the teacher to have more time to do, to really look carefully at the students' representations on their, their solutions to larger problems. And so we're, we're, we're using the, the, the technology in tandem with the other responsibilities of the teacher. Christina, um, uh, do teachers use this as just homework, or is this more of an in-class activity, or test, or whatever? Or can well, it as, as we'll see later, I have a visual that sort of shows all the different types of technology you can use. And um, you can, this is a tool that is just online. So no matter what kind of internet device you have, you can, you can access assessments and log in. And so, so much of where the teacher asks the students to use assessments depends on what sort of access their students have. And right now in, um, 
in, in the world that kind of runs the gamut. It runs the gamut from people who have a couple labs in their school and kids who really don't have many computers at home. So they need to go to the computer lab to use assessments um, and get some assessment data. Where other schools have one-to-one -one, um, iPads, and so the students can grab their iPad anytime at home or at school and, and use assessments. We even have a feature that allows kids to download the assignment and not just the questions, but the questions and all the feedback into their device so that when they're sitting on the bus or at the soccer field, uh, waiting and watching their sister play soccer, they can do their homework on their device, get all the feedback that they, that they would get when they were connected to the internet, and then when they get home or to anywhere where there's the internet or at school, um, they can upload that. And so that was something that we developed for Maine because Maine has laptops for all their middle school students, but those same students, even though they can take their devices home, don't necessarily have internet connection at home. And so um, it's, it's a really, you ask a really interesting question because so much of it just depends on the access to, um, to technology. So, um, but homework, however, as you mentioned, is about 50% of what we see. Um, so when we look at, st at student use of assessments, we see, you know, um, about half the students using it in, during the school day, and then there's another half of students who are starting to, to use it at after school, school hours. And this homework um, we call book work is one of the ways that teachers do that. And um, I'm just going to click on the problem, and it says, go here for the homework page. Now, we're doing this for this demonstration purposes, and I'm going to open this up in a new tab. There we go. Um, uh, we're doing this for demonstration purposes, but um, this is a history assignment from a textbook. And most students would have this textbook, so they take the textbook home. The questions are already written in the textbook. The teacher's used to giving this assignment. But instead of giving this assignment and having the student answer the questions on a piece of paper, the, the teacher has built these questions into assessments. And so we've opened this homework page and put those questions right there. So when we look here, question one, number one, um, is that what we're doing here? Question number four. Question number four says, why did the British think the military forces were superior to those of the Americans? And over here, this teacher has decided to make that a multiple choice. And so we submit our answer. We're told no. So unlike the normal homework where the student is given no feedback and they have to wait till the next day, here are the students giving that feedback right when they're sitting at home. And they're, you know, I just guessed that second one. Um, then this one says they, they may be more than one country. Select all that apply. We can go back and look at the question. Uh, why did loyalists support Britain? And so we need to check all that apply for that one. Um, teachers can select between the different answer types that we've seen already. Um, if it's a math homework and the answer is 12, this teacher can ask them just to input the answer 12. Um, if it's multiple choice, they use multiple choice. If, if they really want the student to, to explain, then they can use that open response that we saw earlier with the ACORN problem. Um, and so teachers then are, are getting feedback before the students get, um, get to class. So this, once again, we're playing Megan the student right now. And so what I'm going to do, just so that we can get our grounding, I'm going to go back to this teacher again. So this was the math question, but um, we were just looking at the American History homework assignment. So this is what the teacher would see before class even starts. They would see that, in fact, um, everyone saw the, the assignment. 57% got the, the first question right. Only 32% got the second question right. And about half of them got the, la the third question. Um, and in fact, 61% said Charlestown, uh, where the real answer was Yorktown. And um, teachers can do two things with this report from homework. They can study it before class starts and make um, adjustments to their class. They can show this item report to the students and together they can analyze the result. And that is the part that I just find really exciting. Um, notice that there was an essay. We didn't get to that one, but there's an essay question and the teacher can grade that too. We did the language arts question where we put in an essay. Let's find Megan Heffernan again. Um, there she is. I read the section, and then I said the main idea is that there were acorns, that there are acorns in the picture. 
um, and notice I haven't been graded yet. But um, some of these students have been graded. And so that now becomes something that the teacher can do. How hard is it for teachers to um, learn how to you know, add in questions or how to modify this for their, for their classes? The difficulty level of trying to move from doing things on paper to doing things um, in technology, a lot of it depends on the, the teacher's ability. But, um, but once a teacher really sees that this is going to benefit them directly, uh, it's not that hard. So for this type of homework assignment, I would click on the Build tab, and then I would just create a new problem set. And I would name it. This is, you know, the homework page 12. And actually, I mean, in fairness, it's a lot easier to build something from a textbook because, um, as you know, who's going to who's going to ask the question, right? So if there's the textbook has already developed the good questions, then we've taken away that difficulty because I think coming up with good questions is in itself a, a, a something that that takes some real skill. So if the teacher is just going to take what's the questions that are already in the textbook, um, they can very quickly just say, you know. Uh, number four, and that the answer is five, and we're going to make the question algebra, and um, and then I'm going to go to the next one, and I'm going to do number four, and this one or number five, this one is one of those ask the you know why questions, so I'm going to change that to ungraded open response, and then I go down to the bottom and I create it. So we've just created a two question. Um, uh, little quiz and I can test drive it. Whoops, that actually opened in a new window which is not going to work on this. Um, let me try this. Test drive, open in a new tab. There we go. Um, so remember this was our question number four and the answer is five so I can type in five. So doing what I just did is this sort of minimal amount of feedback and here is the essay. So doing the minimal amount of feedback and doing it from content that was already built by a textbook publisher. Notice we couldn't though because it's copyrighted material we didn't put the actual questions in. That is really quick. Um, we have a teacher who she and I were walking down the hall and she just sort of stopped and she looked at me and she said you know what I'm gonna just put my homework online because she already was one of those teachers who graded everything. She really had learned that that made a big difference for her students to grade their homework. And this way, she was getting the grading done automatically while she was putting in those 10 or 15 minutes um, building it and then not having to do the grading. And then next year, it's already built. So there's a little bit of a time shift um, with where you put your energies. So I know that's a little of a long-winded um, answer to that question. But building, building is, does not take as long as once you get sort of the hang of it. Kind of like once you learn how to use Word, you can use Word or PowerPoint or whatever. Um, and as you see, well, as you'll see when we go and look at the teacher, um, we'll be able to see the types of things he's built um, for his own classroom. So there were only two more types of problems that I wanted to show you from the student's view. And those are what we call test mode. So notice everything we've done so far gives feedback. The first ones I showed you gave a lot of feedback. But um, I appreciate Honor's question about the time. It actually takes a lot of time to build that feedback, where it doesn't take so much time to build certain questions. And what teachers find is just, and when I say feedback, to, to write the tutoring. But what teachers find is just getting that immediate feedback, you're right, you're wrong, is really way more than half the battle as far as, as um, giving this, the students, getting them more engaged in what they're doing at home. And, and so most teachers, if they're going to build something, they don't put all the feedback. But there's times when you just want to give a pretest that doesn't have any, um, any feedback at all. So we do also have test mode. So here's a life science um, quiz that's just done in test mode. And I'm not told whether I'm right or wrong. This is particularly good for um, a pretest situation where um, you you don't really expect the students to know the content and you don't want them to get hung up on getting them wrong. You just want them to finish the assessment. And, um, and then you have the data as the teacher and you can respond to the data and you, we would have an item report just like I showed you. And finally, um, 
assessments is really like I like we said in the title is something to harness technology and harness what's on the internet. And I'm going to show you one problem set that kind of goes with this. Um, this one is linking, and I have this exploded really large because of this presentation, but the students wouldn't see it so big. But notice they see this thing, and it says play. Click on the picture to play space lunchtime. And so they click on that, and it takes them to a really cool internet game. So here we are. Oh, we got music going. I'm going to close this out. The students would play that game on the internet. Um, and then they'd say, I'm done playing, and click Submit. And then the next problems would actually give the, the little formative quiz that came with the activity. So teachers are trying to harness those things online. But um, I have a, a, a son who's in sixth grade. And I remember last year, he was asked by his teachers to practice, um, to practice his multiplication skills. And so he said, Mom, can I do it online? It took him five. 10 minutes just to find a good game. I was happy to have him practice using a cool game on the internet, but if his teacher had done it this way and said, go to this game, play the game for a while, and then collected the information on the student with this sort of follow-up quiz, then the teacher would have more information on what happened with that thing at home, and the student would be there right on target um, quicker. And so this is something that teachers just build themselves. They put the link in, they put the image in, they figure out exactly, you know, they know what, what problem sets they want. Or we have a bunch of these that are already built as well. So it's that sort of combination. So that's sort of the beginning. Um, we've kind of reached that point where we can see, oh, that's what assistance is. Um, it's really pretty simple. But what it does is it takes what computers are good at. Computers are good at collecting information, and computers are good at being told, when this happens, do that. So when a student puts an answer in, we give feedback. And so computers are good at that. But we still need the teachers to look at the data, to analyze the data. Um, and that's where we're going to go look at now. We're going to go sort of get deeper into how this changes schools and what this can be, how this can affect schools by looking at one particular fifth grade teacher's account. And so here we go. Now this looks like everything else we just looked at. It's got the blue bar across the top, a little bit of yellow splashed in there. But if we look over here to the right, this is uh, Mr. Cole's account. And Mr. Cole um, has three classes. So he has um, a math homework class. So all of his fifth grade students do math homework. He has a skill builders class. Because remember, I showed you those skill builders just practicing those skills. And so this is a place where his kids can go and do the skills that he's assigned. That's really important, what I just said. I said he's assigned. And um, once again, this system puts the teacher in charge. And so it's the teacher who decides what's getting assigned to the students. And there is a really nice place uh, for programs that sort of do all this self-paced work, and I think that that's really nice. Um, but the data that you get from that, if you have your 27 kids in your class, and they're all doing their self-paced, and the computer's making all those choices, it's really hard to turn around and use the data um, in your classroom. And so what we, what we do is we really allow teachers to harness what's going on. So um, let's start with um, Mr. Cole's tests and quizzes. He's, the school year has just started, and if I go to assignments, we can see he gave this beginning of the year assessment. So he, kids walked in the door, they're new fifth graders, he doesn't know them. In fact, this school starts in fifth grade, so these kids came from the elementary school. And he got 62, 62 of his students to finish. Um, and you know, there's these two that enrolled and then had to go to the nurse's office, and maybe I don't know where they are, but we always have those kids who don't quite do everything. Um, but once that's over, once all the students have finished the assessment, the teacher gets to look at the reports. So I'm clicking on the report. I'm going to click on anonymize, because these are real students. And this is his real beginning of the year data. Um, he asks uh, this question number one, this question number two. Now notice the question's not there. So um, what Mr. Cole has done with his test is he's decided to take advantage of the little bit of time he has to build this assessment quickly, so he gets his data back quickly. But he actually took it from a test that he already had built. So 
you know, if you're in a school that already has a benchmark initiative and you already have your benchmarks built and they're already on Word and they're already photocopied, you can actually give this extra layer of um, information to yourselves by putting that into assessments pretty quickly. Um, and we've had schools that have done it both ways. They've put in the, all the questions or they've just done this so that Mr. Cole actually hands out the, the, the paperwork. Um, and you can see here's one kid, 88% walked in the door knowing a lot of fifth grade math already. Um, another student at 27%. We can see that 71% of the students said A. So if we could analyze this question, we could see where their, their misconceptions are. That's a lot of kids who got the same wrong answer. Um, and so this data is there instantly. Um, if you do professional learning communities in your school and you have your, one of the big parts of a professional learning community is common data. And so if you do that and all of the, um, the teachers are sitting around, here they've got the data instantly so their energies go towards, um, towards analyzing that data. So this is his quizzes, but if we notice we also had um, his math homework. And even though it is the beginning of the year, there is quite a bit of homework that's already been done. So you can see these are the, um, the assignments from his book. So this is just um, Think Math 1 for Practice Book, page 4, Practice Book, page 5. So he's gotten these right from his book. And I can um, show you that. There we go. In a new tab, this is what the questions look like. Some of the questions the students had to put the answer in. Some of the questions were multiple choice. But these eight questions came directly from his book. And then if we look at the report, we can see what Mr. Cole sees every morning. So he gets a few kids, of course, who didn't do it. Fair number, 85% correct. So something's going right. Um, but look at that, one of the questions, 64% correct, and over half the kids said 24. So that's how he starts his class. He takes this, he projects it on the board, and he instantly, see, he instantly starts to have a conversation with his students about, um, about this question, the last one, because we got 94, 94, 92. And remember, these students got feedback as they were working, so the ones who got it wrong even got a little bit of feedback. So we, he's able to change the amount of time he spends by analyzing this data first off. And um, Honor, you asked about, or whoever asked about um, building, we can go to Mr. Cole's build section, and you can see he actually built all these problems himself. So he's built these. Um, but what else has he built, and what else has been built in his school? So the final thing I'm going to show you um, from, a, from an account is where assessments and this data flow can really help um, the whole community of teachers at the school work together. So um, they have these folder structures. And if we go into the school folder, you'll see that all the teachers in the school have um, put all the content that they're using on assessments into common folders. And so um, Mr. Cole is a fifth grade teacher. So we can see that all of his Think Math homework assignments are already right here, as well as the benchmarks that he's doing. So here's the beginning of the year benchmark, his end of the year, and his benchmark 1A and his benchmark 2A. Um, that's where the fifth graders convene. The sixth grade teachers, they've done their organization their way. And so you can see their benchmarks, their Common Core State Standards. You asked about that. So they're using this as a place to start to organize what's going on there. Um, chapter 1 for 2012-13, their open response questions. So getting kids to really um, answer those open responses and so on. So having these common places allows teachers to really work um, together. Um, how would you yeah. recommend that principals use um, this information with their teachers? Right. And so I'm actually going to go back to my PowerPoint because, as I said, that was sort of the last thing I wanted to show you. That's an important point. And I've been working as we've, we've been partnering with NASP. I've been working more and more with principals. And um, I don't think that a school can go very far in the way that they take, take real care of this data use without good leadership. That said, I also don't think that the principal can get any of this going without a real teacher. So if you noticed, everything I had to show you to get you up to speed to understanding what assessments is, 
is I had to show you from that student perspective and that teacher perspective. And um, so we've got this, you know, flexible, so my teachers can make decisions, um, but I think it also allows the principal to come in and say, let's, I really want everyone to do this benchmark. And the teachers are going to say, sure, not a problem. We do, our kids are used to doing this every night for homework, so you want to add that benchmark for all of us to do? Fine, not a problem. And so that flexibility allows this to be a tool that, that principals can use to gather up data. Um, and any time you do do a benchmark, which is sort of more for that whole school type process of looking at how the school is doing, you're not wasting the kids' time because the kids are getting feedback as they do their benchmark. And so instead of saying, oh, we're going to give four benchmarks um, every year or even more than that, teachers like look and they're like, but what happens to our class time? But um, with, with all this feedback happening as the assessments are happening, in other words, the assistance as the assessments are going on, um, you're not wasting precious, precious classroom time or precious feedback time in order to collect that data. And I think that that's a really important thing for principals. Um, so very quickly, the teachers are spending more time, less time correcting and more time reflecting and responding. This, and, um, but they're also, you know, I, I needed to put this slide in here because I wanted to make sure everyone understood that even though all this stuff's done on technology, the kids still have to do their work out on paper. <laughs> so I didn't want to, I just wanted to make sure that this slide was there. Students, meanwhile, are doing less doing and more reflecting. So that's the student perspective. More reflecting, um, less of that just, I did my homework, I got it done, because, you know, the minute they get it wrong, they're like, oh, why? And they really become engaged. Um, but this is sort of that principal perspective. Um, principals, more and more, and we saw it in Chicago, we see it in Massachusetts, um, are being asked to use data to help with, um, with teacher evaluation. And um, we, principals ask their teachers, you know, I, and the teachers are like, oh, I know that they've got it. I see it in their eyes. And what assessments allows for is a little less of that and a little more of, Here's how they did it first, and now here's how they're doing now. Um, remember, Mr. Cole had that one student who took the beginning of the year benchmark and got an 88%. The principal is going to ask Mr. Cole, what are you doing with your accelerated students? And Mr. Cole's going to say, I, third day of school, I found out that this student was really, was really accelerated and knew so much stuff, so I have done blank, blank, and the blank. And so I think it allows the teachers to answer some of those questions that principals are always asking but not have that, that deflation of, of that heavy sigh of, really, when am I going to have time to do those things that you're asking of me? So it really frees up the teacher's time to do some of the things that are important for the principal, um, to really be able to speak about the data so that the principal can, can be monitoring what's going on in the school. Um, the other thing is, um, one of the teacher's jobs in working, or one of the principal's jobs in working with the teachers is to not have teachers be working in this sort of parallel existence. Um, I'm in my classroom teaching fifth grade, and I'm over in my classroom teaching fifth grade, where um, when I showed you those folders, the teachers are now saying, well, I'll build chapter one, and why don't you build chapter two, and you'll build chapter three, and then they all know that they're all doing their homework on assessments, and I've, I've heard this from teachers, and one will ask the other, oh, have you done chapter, have you done section four? Because my kids all had trouble with this, this problem, so you might want to give your kids a little heads up. So we're moving from the teachers having this parallel existence to doing common teaching and learning activities. And this is really, I think, one of the, ma a major role of a principal is to provide um, ways for their teachers to, to be more collaborative and work more collaboratively. And this is something that just changes that workload to teachers doing what they really got in this teaching for, which is to work with other people and to, to, um, to really help the students where they need to be helping and not just sitting, sitting grading it and being exhausted by what they see in the grades. Um, so that's, that's where sort of that, that principle. So teachers can work together. Um, this homework, I was just mentioning, so we've got homework, everyone's um, doing that um, together so that they can see common data on number three, common data on number four, and just still using their old textbooks, the textbook they've already decided to use. Um, here's a report from teacher A and teacher B. 
Teacher B's kids got 23% and Teacher A's kids got 47%. And so the teachers, and this is actually not from a benchmark. This is not from some high stakes data. This is from last night's homework. And I think that it is very, um, when, we asked, when we asked our teachers to do work with data, and the only data we start working with is big high stakes data, it's very intimidating. And um, when it's just last night's data and you look at the differences between them, um, it really gives you a lot easier place to start talking. Because teachers can do something about it. Because it was last night's homework, we can do something about it today. Um, and so I think asking, getting that data, that data philosophy going on in your school um, is really important. So less correcting, more responding, less doing on the student's part, more reflecting. Because of course we all know the students are the ones who have to do the learning. Um, and the principals, like I said, looking at um, looking at the data and not just, oh, I just know my kids are doing getting it, or I just know that none of them understand. Um, and so that that piece of, of feedback. So Honor, do you know of any other questions? Um, yeah, um, Christina. Um, um, how, the, we're, we're, I'm real interested in. Um, how this is used, is it, is it, um, do you use it with just one teacher or two teachers? Can it, does it have to be used by the whole school? Can you tell us a little bit how this is implemented? Do, how much does it cost? You know, that sort of right. thing. Right. Well, first of all, there's those three, the three F's of assessments. Um, it's flexible. It gives feedback. But it's also a free, a free public service of our university. Um, federal grant funding funded us to build this and to and to put it out there and so it is a free public service of Worcester Polytechnic Institute but I think that going back to the question of how it gets going um, typically assessments and I think also as, as far as a leadership the, the best way to get started is to find a, a pilot teacher somebody in your school who, who embraces technology and can be the one who gets started and a lot of that is because um, we're providing a lot of choice. And we know that if we're going to get a whole faculty involved in something, providing them with a lot of choice might not be the best thing. That said, I cannot begin to know what the real needs of or what the, what the missions that are going on, the objectives of the school at this time. So a, a pilot teacher who's just kind of excited about technology is the best place to start. And that pilot teacher um, has to decide, you know, where where do my students in my community, in this school, access technology? And that's, that teacher has to take all those choices and make some decisions. So this image is showing, you know, we can be on an iPhone or an iTouch. We can be on computers. We can be on, um, I like this picture of the three kids with the laptop because they can work together and still get feedback as they're growing. Um, this is actually my son in the lower corner doing his homework. He has an assistance teacher this year, and so he does his homework on assistance. Um, they can do iPads, and but um, that question of how do you get there, how do you how do you get to that spot, is really about getting that pilot teacher, and um, and that goes back to the fact that I just spent a lot of time talking about what teachers do with assistance. Assistance really is a tool used by teachers, but like we also said, it's a it then will facilitate the leadership of the principal to get the whole faculty to move in a direction that's really important, using data to inform instruction, not just um, looking the kids in the eyes and, and having the students thinking about that and, and doing that feedback piece. Um, so the principal really needs to validate the effort, and also the principal needs to evaluate the technology access and use. And so where do you, where, how am I going to help get technology? So I've had schools that have, teachers have started using assessments, and then they go to their principal and they say, you know, I'm using this tool, but I don't have a projector. I really want, I've heard that it's really neat to show the students the item report. And so it's the principal's job to think about how do I get projectors in front of my students. Um, on the other side of the coin, if you have all the technology, this I think is a, a really nice place for teachers to start using, a, using the technology because it, it does facilitate things that they're already doing. They're already giving homework. They're already trying to give feedback to their students, and so the idea of the students getting that feedback in, immediately is very appealing. Um, but I think it's really about finding that pilot teacher uh, to get started. 
Um, there's one other question. Uh, will the teachers need to be trained? The, the speed in which a teacher picks up assistance really depends on the, on the teacher. Um, we have found one thing over the last year, especially with this um, the Next Generation Learning Challenge grant, we've done a lot more training because we've had funds to help us do those trainings. And we found that you know training a whole faculty just doesn't work. You have to have that pilot teacher on board who can say, I can do this with our kids. It works, and this is what's so exciting, and this works for an initiative that's at our school. So in order to get that pilot teacher going, um, we've set up uh, online trainings uh, that we do using a platform called Edmodo. And um, so what a, what a principal would do would be sit down with your teacher and say, let's go get you to apply for an assistance account. So you go to assistance.org, click on Get Started, and then um, if you click on I am an administrator, you'll basically get an email that kind of tells you what I just told you in an hour. <laughs> um, so what you really, <laughs> excuse me, want to do is get that teacher to come here and say, I am a teacher. And they can learn a little bit about assistance, but then they would click on click here to apply for an account. And up would come a, um, up would come a form that they would fill out. We receive the form, and then we invite um, anybody who's filled out the form to um, come to one of our online trainings. Um, we, we also have a system where we could come to a school, but we really don't come to a school until you have one teacher who's sort of up and running and piloting. And, and that's sort of where we're sitting right now um, with assistance. And so finding that teacher, or probably preferably two teachers, to work together to go through our online training, it's just uh, five short lessons. They learn about being a student, they learn how to get their account, to manipulate their account, to find content that we've already built, and they use that for a while. Then they can join another training that's for how to build. They can learn how to build, and how fast someone jumps on building depends on whether they find the content they want, but it also depends on whether they're one of those teachers who likes to do their own thing. And so they, they learn how to build, and then they're off and running. There's other features of assistments that we didn't even begin to mention today, um, and we offer a next steps um, seminar uh, for that as well. Christina, you've done a great job, and I just want to thank you so much for all this information. I think this could be a great tool for um, all of the teachers and principals out there who are working with Common Core, and um, it's a, it, just, you know, it just sounds like a fabulous tool. We just want to thank you for attending this session. Thank you so much. Um, Christina, if you have any closing remarks. Um, just if you have any questions, you can come here um, under support. We have an email. You can email. I get most of that email. Um, if you want to read more about the research under About Us, that's um, Neil. And you can go to his page and read all of those papers about all the great research we do. Here's the university as well. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you again, everyone, for attending this session. 